people always laughed and said, you know, I don't know why in the world I ever came to Anderson because we had nothing to start with. We were in army barracks for wars. But Dr. Clark was such a charismatic person that he uh, attracted people and got them to see the vision that he saw for Mm -hmm. MD Anderson. The Mayfair was a building that Anderson had purchased and we had a faculty dining room on the second floor. Dr. Clark would often join us for lunch. It was a very close-knit group of faculty. We were small, and it was possible. He could talk about anything. He had a tremendous engineering background and was a, a renaissance man. He was a delightful person to be around. In fact, being an engineer, you know, the stone that clad the original building was this pink marble that you see still today. He had seen that when he was in medical school in Georgia. He used to hitchhike back and forth from medical school to home on the weekends and would have to get up real early on Monday morning in order to be sure and catch a ride and be back at medical school by the time classes started. And so he said as he would be standing on the highway, the sun would come up on this quarry and he said that the the marble took on a rosy pink glow Mm -hmm. that to him indicated hope. And he said, if I ever have a hospital, I'm going to have that marble in the hospital. And so sure enough, R. Lee Clark had a hospital, and he used the pink marble. The only problem was is that the quarry ran out of pink marble, and so now the additions have to have it stuccoed on the side. I understand that when the Anderson Foundation gave the building, wanting to preserve the quality of the structure, that they said that all additions should have that pink marble, but now it's impossible because there is no more slabs that they crush it and put it into the stucco in order to maintain the trust specifications. Mm-hmm.